straight from the start in whatever format it takes. It can be an online blog site or it can be an RTE. But the debate and the key question is, do you agree with that empowerment of local government? Do you, will you introduce a mayoral bill for Dublin? Yes or no? We will. We have it ready to go. Similarly, if we're to have a debate about politics in this election, let it be about corporate donations as a symbol, as a key sign that, yes, cronyism is something we want to lose beh leave behind. So Fine Gael, will you introduce it, yes or no? Labour Party, will you end those union subscriptions funding your party, yes or no? Because we know what we would do. Semi-state assets, in a difficult economic time, will you sell them, yes or no? That's the debate we need to have. We need to get into those questions so it gives people a certain sense of where different parties want this country to go. Climate change bill. Fianna Gael, will you do it? Yes or no? Fianna Fáil, will you do it? Yes or no? Because it is important, if we are serious, if we are listening to what's happening in the world, if we are to seen to adapt and thrive, that's the very legislation we need to introduce. I mentioned Sputnik earlier on, and the effect that had leading to the development of research agencies which developed the internet. One of the other developments from the space race was NASA employing James Lovelock, who was taken on as, um, to ask the question, is there life on Mars? And to try and answer that question, he, led, he looked back at Earth in terms of how would you know if there was life on Earth, if you were looking at it. And it was the first time they could look from any distance to our planet. And in doing that, he suddenly developed his Gaia theory in terms of these incredible complex systems here that are delicate, that seem to be reg self-regulate to maintain ideal conditions for life. Uh, and now that balance is threatened by the greenhouse gases that are coming from an industrialized system. So climate change bill is needed. That trip out of Earth led to the Green Movement. It's come, it's waxed and waned over the 40 years that has was evolved. I remember, John, you talk about the 80s, I remember that time in the late 80s, it was coming really strong as a tide thinking through to the real signatory in 1991, and then ebbed, and then came back and ebbed. It's ebbing at the moment, but it will come back because actually it's speaking of fundamental truth for a new form of thinking a new form of seeing how we actually manage this planet and operate ourselves within it to the best interest of all of us. I've always been inspired by John Moriarty. I only met him once. It was one of the most important moments I've had in the last three or four years. His simple message, I brought it down to kind of one line in, in one of his books, it, that question, do we shape nature to suit us or do we let nature shape us to suit it? Green philosophy. Let's work with nature. We can do it. I know from my experience, having seen now, worked in nine years working in this digital technologies area and this clean energy area, I think we can do it. I'm not a pessimist. I'm not Malthusian. I'm actually enthused that we can do it. We can develop clean energy that powers a transport system, heats our homes, provides our industrial jobs, as well as this internet system, which is like a nervous system for the planet if you think in a guy and way. So I actually think we can do it. Um, it's a question of political will. And it's not just about what some people might see as green things, about the physical, natural world, or energy, and so on. When you start looking, when you start having that philosophy of actually thinking in the natural way of doing things, it changes the way that you will raise a child or educate a child. You're seeing changes to see how that child fits in in a natural way in this complex system of life. It changes the way you actually run your health system or look after, mind your health. It changes the way you run your justice system. Because as Jonathan Parrott says, sustainability has a social dimension at its core. That your security, or my security, is tied up with your security. That actually, uh, there's no, I'm not gonna benefit in the end from trying to shut you up or cut you out of the deal, or even lock you up. So this green philosophy, this green way of thinking, goes into every sphere of government and of society. 
And it is, I believe, one that is in tune with where the world is going, where we need to adapt and to thrive. I'm sorry now I've taken so long, but I wanted to finish with a couple of thoughts. I was reading John Moriarty, one of his books, and he quotes Yeats. And it just stood out to me as a, as a, he quoted an essay from Yeats from the mid-1920s, 1926, when he was in a, it's a fairly sharp few essay in terms of, he was in a difficult time. He was a senator in a real political battle, in the introduction, I think it was a divorce bill at the time. And he wrote an essay, followed up by his several Shannon appearances, on the need for audacity of thought. And there's one point I just want to quote on it, which just kind of took me slightly relevant to our current day circumstances. He said, and this is fairly sharp, which is strange, I was kind of joked to me slightly, but he said, we are quick to hate and slow to love. We have never lacked a press to excite the most evil passions. To some extent, Ireland has shown in an acute form the European problem and must seek a remedy where the best minds of Europe seek it, in audacity of speculation and creativity. I put it to you that the Green Party and this green political movement has exactly that. It's not populist. It is based on thought. It is based on creativity and a sense of importance of creation. But it is a vision. It's a vision, actually, that I think encompasses the whole human dimension as well as the environmental dimension. It's a sense of where we need to go. And to finish, as I said, having talked about jobs and politics and where we need to go, I think for the Irish people, this is a place we can go and really thrive. Using sometimes, say, our sensing that plenty is enough, or enough is plenty. Um, Irish people do get it. When we first went to the government, actually, the opinion polls ratings went right up. They've adapted to clever waste, waste management systems as if it's their own. They've adapted to clean energy. I know it, I see it. Irish business people are really going for it and will do it. Um, so even despite our difficulties at this present time, I think actually there's a vision we have of where Ireland needs to go that makes sense economically, makes sense politically, and makes sense with what's happening in the rest of the world. I'll finish by saying there's a real fear that that vision is about to disappear from Dáil Éireann. Looking at the polls, being honest, the most likely prospect now is that there will not be a single Green Party TD in the next Dáil. I think that would be a shame. I think not to have a number of individuals who are willing to work in cooperation with other parties but are willing to present creatively that alternative vision. That loss in our parliament at this present time would be a huge loss when we need to look forward as to where we want to go. When we need people who are connected to an international green moment who know where other countries are looking to go. And I suppose as we face into this election and as we go to people on the doors, that's what I'm going to have to simplify it right down to in that few seconds you have before you start becoming fearful that I'm letting this man's heat go outside his door. Keep the green in the door. It actually benefits this country, whether in opposition or in government. Do you need to have two Labour representatives? Do you need to have two Fianna Gael representatives? Do you need to have two Fianna Fáil representatives? Surely it makes sense, just thinking strategically, thinking about where this country has to go, that we don't lose that representation, that we keep it. Um, and we will certainly live up to our responsibility in trying to do whatever we can to represent people and represent that vision. Um, I want to finish by thanking some people. I want to finish by thanking my wife, Victoria White. And she has been the most fantastic support that I could ever expect in this difficult time. She has a vision. She gets how you raise a child. She has been very critical and honest in her assessment of everything we've done and someone I've turned to at every stage to say, what do you think? Are we doing the right thing? And I really appreciate the support that she's given me through this time. I've also been lucky that I've had a wonderful team close to me. Going back for years now, working with Claire and Breed and Sudhu and Stephen and Owen and Grace, I was really lucky, talented people um, who were willing to give everything to try and get our job done, to try and get things delivered. I was also lucky 
that I was working with parliamentary colleagues that I like and respect. We went through an incredibly difficult period. The fact that with the exception of my friend Deirdre de Berker, who I regret leaving, but I, can, I accept her position and views. But with the exception of that, I think anyone should admit if you think about it, that it was a remarkable thing that a Green Party was able to get through the sort of pressures and stresses that we were under to finish what we said we would do to be able to hand on a baton to the next government without having uh, dropped a financial bill onto them, new budget costs onto them. The fact that we were able to do that, that we're all sp speaking and friends, is I think a real huge achievement. And I think, John, it's an honor to yourself that you kept us together and kept the Green Party intact in these most difficult circumstances. All of our Green Party parliamentary colleagues, my parliamentary colleagues are running. All of us have faced the same prospect and same difficulty. But I think we're going to give it our all. We have a month to change the narrative. We have a month to show people that actually what we have achieved, which is real. We have a month to set out our vision of where we think this country needs to go and how we think we have a political, a pol a political approach that will get us there. It will not be easy. We will be largely ignored now, not in media, because now we're out of government. You see, oh well, that's, that's done. It's not. Uh, it's not done. 